Welcome to Centennial Methodist Church here at the Roseville campus. We're so glad that you've joined us for worship today. Just a reminder that later in the service, we're going to have communion. So if you want to pause for just a minute and run and make sure that you've got your um, fruit of the vine and your bread, we'll use that later on in the service together. Come and let's worship our God together. I invite you to share with me our call to worship as we read responsively. A table is set before us. A feast is prepared for us. A meal of bread and wine, of meat and bitter herbs. The Lord calls us to this supper of remembrance. The Lord calls us to serve and to be served. As we break the bread and share the cup, understanding may fail us. But we will never forget Christ's example. We will never forget the full extent of his love.
Today, we are focusing on the Holy Meal. Jesus was a devout Jew and observed the Holy Jewish Passover meal with his disciples during his last night before his death. He gave the meal a whole new meaning for his followers. We read from Luke chapter 22. When the hour came, he took his place at the table and the apostles with him. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took a loaf of bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup after the supper, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. Here ends the reading. May the Lord add blessing to the reading of the Holy Word. Hello, friends. It's good to see you. I know many of you children have been practicing our song at home, so we can try it together today. is you're watching. I hope that today the kids and everybody else is paying extra close attention because today we're going to take the time with children and the intro to scripture and the scripture and we're going to mix them all together. So everybody make sure you have your listening ears on. If you've been watching with us over the last couple of weeks, you've seen that we've been working our way through the Old Testament stories of Genesis and now into Exodus. And throughout history, we see some good people and some not so good people and some really mean people like tyrants who are mean and oppressive to people who are different than themselves. In perhaps what is the central scripture of the Old Testament lesson, a tyrant rises up in Egypt, and he's called Pharaoh. Now, Pharaoh has enslaved the Hebrew people, but God wants to set the, 
the oppressed people free through Moses. And now Moses has been facing off with Pharaoh, and Pharaoh's had a lot of chances to set the oppressed people free. And every time he says he's going to, but then he doesn't. And he actually oppresses them even more. In today's scripture, we find the origin of the holy Passover meal. God tells Moses and the Hebrew people to get themselves ready, to eat really quickly, to spread the blood of some lambs on the doorposts of their homes, and that God will pass over them, keeping them safe. But they're not just supposed to live through this, they're supposed to remember it. They remember it again and again so much. It's so important that it becomes the first part of the year for them. And this remembering is to be done with actions and with a meal. And the remembering is important. It reminds them of God's liberating power, of God's amazing acts for them and what God has brought them through. Remembering can be pretty important. I wonder if you have some things at home that help you remember important things in your life. Maybe even some important things where God was at work in your life. My mom has a cedar chest at home that she keeps her special things in that she likes to remember. Some people have a keepsake box that they like to put their special things in. Today I brought a bag with a couple special things that I wanted to share with you. This is my very first Christmas outfit. It kind of helps me remember the beginning parts of my life, right? I don't remember it, but seeing things from when I was little helps me remember that. I also have some things from high school. This is a little clay jar, a little clay pot or bowl that one of my best friends made for me. It says, you rock on it. And it's just a nice reminder whenever I'm having like a really hard day or just not feeling very great to look over at this and remember that at least at one point, someone thought that I rocked. And you know what? I bet that you rock too. I also have this necklace and if you can see it, it's a Jerusalem cross. It's a special kind of cross. And this was a cross, um, not this specific one, but the shape, the Jerusalem cross, was given to all the Conference Council of Youth Ministry members. It was a group of youth that I was a part of in high school that helped to prepare and plan uh, church youth events for kids all across North and South Dakota. And that was an important time in my life when I was discerning my call to ministry and how God was working in my life then. I also have a couple other things that remind me of God as well. This is a Bible that was given to me when I was commissioned to begin my work in the church. And this is a stole that I was given when I was ordained as a pastor in the United Methodist Church. And these are symbols, things that help me remember how God has been at work in my life. I bet that you have some important things that help you remember how God has been at work in your life and just important events as well. Maybe later today, you and your family can look through those and explore them and share your stories together. But first, let's pray, and then let's read our scripture. Holy God, thank you for the many ways that you liberate us and set us free. Help us to remember those places and those times again and again. Amen. Let's read from Exodus chapter 12. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household, If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join in its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month, 
and then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments, for I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. And no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. Here ends the reading. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of the Holy Word. I invite you to pray with me. O oh God, out of all the words which are spoken this day, out of all the words which are sung, out of all the words which are heard, May it be your living word that remains and abides with us through the power of the Spirit and in the name of the Christ we pray. And let everyone say, Amen. We human beings love to break bread. Think of the wonderful meals you remember in your life. Maybe Sunday fried chicken after church or getting together with the guys for pizza, or that outdoor plaza or picnic on a warm summer day with a good friend. Last October, right about this time, our daughter Caitlin and now son-in-law Dylan were married in a backyard wedding in Portland, Oregon. You never know what the weather's going to do for an outdoor wedding, but we lucked out. I'll never forget the father-daughter dance with her, uh, officiating the ceremony. All the folks there from both Dylan's side of the family and our side of the family from Minnesota and from Oregon, and wonderful food, food, food. Caitlin is a professional baker and high school culinary teacher and she and her now husband have and have always had high expectations for food. And to make it authentic for the wedding, to make it authentic to what they love, they had food trucks with wood-fired pizza with all sorts of toppings available. And instead of a wedding cake, they had humongous cookies that Caitlin herself baked that morning. Talk about the bride going overtime. She baked them that morning. Chocolate fev. I had to look up what fev means. Chocolate fev cookies. Gluten-free double chocolate cookies. Peanut butter turmeric cookies. Brown butter miso cookies. Food, food, food. We ate well. Food is God's gift. It's hard work for those who cook and bake as co-creators with God. I want to talk today about holy meals. I want to talk about the gift of the central meal in our Christian faith, holy communion. And to do so, I want to look at some of the different names we use for it. One name is Eucharist, E-U-C-H-R-I-S-T, E-U-C-H-A-R-I-S-T. Let's get it right. It's a name that our Episcopalian brothers and sisters use more than we Methodists do, obviously. And it means thanksgiving. It comes from the Greek word eucharisteo, which means giving thanks. It's meant to be a joyous thing. Now, I've been blessed to serve churches as pastor in rural Minnesota and in the city, and 
uh, in the suburbs on Lake Minnetonka and here in Roseville. And I was blessed to serve for six whole years at South, in South Minneapolis at the corner of Blaisdell and 46th Street, early in my ministry. And I'll never forget how we evolved in our celebration and observance of Holy Communion there. We moved from having communion four times a year to having monthly communion. And during my last couple years there as pastor, we started inviting the whole congregation every month to stand or sit in a big circle around the perimeter of the sanctuary. The side aisles were wide enough that we could do that very nicely. And as the server and I would bring the bread and the cup to each communicant in the circle, about a hundred people in all, we all sang hymns a cappella that we knew by heart. Things like, they'll know we are Christians by our love, or the chorus, Alleluia, Alleluia, or Amazing Grace. And then after everyone had been served, as we concluded our singing, we would all partake of the elements together. There was such a spirit of joy. We would bring our brokennesses. We would bring our struggles. We would bring our, bring our griefs. We would bring our joys, our dreams. And we were in it together. We were in it with Christ. There was such a spirit of joy to this. It was Eucharist. It was giving thanks. Eucharist, you see, is not only a meal that points us to the infinite love of Christ on Good Friday, where Jesus at the meal on Monday Thursday said, this is my body, this is my blood. Eucharist is also a resurrection meal. According to Luke's gospel, Luke chapter 24, after the resurrection, the risen Christ is made known to the two disciples in their home in the village of Emmaus. And here Christ enacts the four actions of communion that you'll find in the other accounts of the Last Supper. He takes the bread, he blesses it, he breaks it, he gives it to them. It's a resurrection meal, you see. It's Eucharist. It's giving thanks to God for a new life, for resurrection, for the eternal Christ living in you. Open yourself to the light of Christ in yourself anew as we celebrate Eucharist later in the service today. Open yourself to the eternal Christ within you each and every day. Every time you enjoy any meal, a meal made up of God's gifts, it's Eucharist. A second name for Holy Communion is the Lord's Supper. The Lord's Supper. Just as in the Passover, the Jewish holy meal of liberation from slavery that our Jewish sisters and brothers have celebrated for thousands of years, the Lord's Supper is a holy meal of liberation from sin and death. They are both holy meals. They are both holy meals of liberation. And God is making it happen. It is the Lord's Supper that we're talking about here. Here is the deep, forgiving love of Christ for you, no matter what. You are forgiven. You are loved. It is the Lord's Supper. You are invited. It is Christ who makes up the guest list. We are invited together. Every human being is invited to the Lord's table to be, yes, the forgiven and energized and beloved people of God. And it is also the Lord's Supper because it not only looks backwards, toward what Christ did on Monday Thursday and Good Friday, but it also looks forward. It looks forward to what the Lord is doing in the future. 
One of the communion prayers that we often use praises God, quote, with all the company of heaven. Remember that phrase? We praise God with all the company of heaven. And that's not just a churchy line. It's not just a throwaway line. If heaven is gone, as one person has pointed out, if the Lord's Supper doesn't look forward to heaven, then the whole company of heaven is gone too. But we don't believe that as Christians. We believe that the Lord's Supper is the heavenly banquet that Jesus talked about in the Gospels. We believe Jesus' words when he said in the Gospel of John, in my Father's house are many rooms. I go to prepare a place for you. The Lord's Supper is the gathering of God's people from every century and from every land. As the Apostles' Creed says, we believe in the communion of saints And that means the church unbounded, even by death. Yes, it's the Lord's Supper. It's based in the Lord's resurrection. We take it by faith. Third and finally, this is holy communion. Holy communion. In the Christian faith, folks, a thing isn't holy unless it is shared Hoarding is not the heart of God. Sharing is the whole heart of Jesus. He's always eating with people in the Gospels. He's healing. He's reaching out and teaching in the countryside. He is touching the leper. He loves the people like tax collectors and people with mental illness that the religion of his day had no time for. But he did. He did. If it is to be holy communion, it means that Christ's table is meant to be shared with hungry people. Hungry of body, of soul, of mind, of spirit. It's meant to be shared with hungry people in the world. Two of our newest members are passionate about serving the homeless at Dorothy Day Center for the Homeless. And they can't wait until they they can get back there and help to cook and help to ladle out food for God's children. It's holy communion for them because they are sharing, they are extending this table. And one of our newest members is passionate about opening an eating establishment in Minneapolis to serve and employ the poor. It's extending this table. It's holy communion to him. How do you share with others? It's holy communion when you do so because it's the heart of God. Thanks be to God. Amen and amen.
We come because we are blessed. We come because we are drawn by God's love. Let us give of God's love to others in this time of offering. Will you pray with me? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, we invite you to place in front of you the bread and the fruit of the vine that you have, have gathered. In these times of the pandemic, we have authorization from our bishop to consecrate these communion elements online. Friends, Christ our Lord invites all who seek him to his table. We come to the Lord's Supper together as children of God. Jesus makes the guest list, not us. Our family, chosen by God, is gathered from west and east and includes everyone. Jesus, when he was resurrected from the dead, revealed himself to his disciples in the breaking of bread around a table. May we see the face of God today as we come to the Lord's Supper. On the night he was handed over, the night before he was crucified, Jesus gathered with his friends for a meal. He took the bread and after blessing it, he broke it, saying, this is my body which is broken for you. As often as you eat it, remember me. Please pray all together. Jesus, Jesus says, as we, we take, take this bread, bread let, let it be a sign of all you did for us and who you are for us. Thank you for this bread of life. After sharing the bread, Jesus took a cup of wine. 
and gave it to them to drink, saying, This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for many. Let us pray together. Jesus Jesus, says, we we drink this this cup. Let Let it be a sign for for us of all you did for us and who you are for us. Thank Thank you you that you you bring us peace that passes passes understanding. understanding. I invite you now to partake of the bread together. the body of Christ, the bread of life for you. The cup of hope, the cup of salvation for you. Let all God's people say, Amen. Christ is present indeed. Will you join me in prayer? Jesus, through your death and resurrection, you reconciled the world to God. And through your example, you have shown us a way to peace. Give us strength as the people of God to be channels of peace in the world. Speaking your peace living your peace, and always longing for that moment of eternal peace when we shall see you again. Amen.
now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship, the communion, the koinonia of the Holy Spirit be yours now and forever. And let everyone say, Amen.